Welcome to Successful Philanthropy. I'm Jean Shafiroff, your host. This show is designed to highlight the work of leaders here in the United States and then beyond. Today with us, Nobis Vielman. And Nobis is a Venezuelan fashion designer living in New York. Let's all welcome Nobis. And Nobis, it is so nice to have you with us. And I want to start first with your beginnings. You grew up in Venezuela, and many of us are very curious as to what that must have been like. Can you explain to us a little bit about your background? Jean, what a great opportunity to be here. Thank you very much for this opportunity to tell to the world my story. Well, I born in 1965 in a beautiful city named Merida. Merida is like the Switzerland. Indeed, they are close in the geography because we have a cold weather there. Venezuela is a country that only has one season. The weather is really hot there. But when I was a very child guy, I was one year and a half, my parents died, passed away. First, my father, he was dancing in a party. He has a heart attack. And three months later, my mother died in a car accident. Well, it's a sad story, but I was too shy. I didn't remember anything. The point is that I, I was very lucky because the sister of my mom, Evangelina, raised me and she became my mother. And she's still very happy here with me in New York. But it's curious because she was dedicated her life to fashion. She studied when she was 14, fashion, especially embroidery. And she was great on art. And she's still helping me in the atelier. But we are talking about the past where I have a I think that I have a happy childhood. I studied in a great school dedicated to music and arts. I was a singer, but never wanted. I was a, a, in a professional choir, but I never was very good on that. Nevertheless, I, I was studying music for some time. And my school was amazing because it was studying music, art, and was I was very good at arts, doing sculptures, painting, and is something that I'm recovering at this time of my life. I'm painting again, you know. But it, it was a great time. And uh, it was in Maracaibo because after my parents died, all my family moved to Maracaibo. Maracaibo is the second city of Venezuela. And you know that it's part of the Zulia state. And the Zulia state is very rich. We have there the biggest oil reserve in the world. So it's amazing. And can I ask you, why did you come to the United States? You know, since I started in fashion, I was on my 20s. It, it was an accident, but we will talk about this later. And uh, I, when I came to New York, my first time I was 20. I went, I came to the US when I was maybe 14, 14, first time to LA and Miami because Miami was always the second home of Venezuelans or for Venezuelan. But, but uh, I came to New York when I was 20. I was just starting in fashion. I, I came very excited to buy fabrics and because I knew that New York was the capital for fashion and I was in love. And you know, I remember perfectly my first contact with the city it was Sunday afternoon. And I, I told myself, wow, I think that I wish to live in this city someday. And years later, I continue coming to New York continuously, like a two, twice, or maybe sometime, some other, some years more times to buy fabrics or materials for my fashion company in Venezuela. And well, New York, New York become, became like a, my second place. And I was thinking a lot to live here. And I intend to do it in 1995. I rented an apartment, but I was coming back to my country and traveling. Uh, I was 25 then, but I always dream of living in New York. And now I'm doing my dream real. No? And I understand you were a successful fashion designer in Venezuela. Can you talk a little bit about your career there? 
well, yes, uh, listen, I, I was studying philosophy and later communication. I became journalist in 1990. But in 1985, one of my brothers gave me a piece of leather. I didn't, I, I never thought about being a fashion designer. It was weird because I was dedicated to like my intellectual life. I was thinking like uh, I will be a writer or someone involved in the arts, but never I thought about being a fashion designer. But well, to make this story short, I created three belts. Two days later, my brother gave me that piece of leather. I sold and I made $300. And one of the girls that bought my belt it told me late, days later, Nabis, my father represent many brands. And he asked me for you to give him some sample if you want to sell in other states in the country. I said, well, it looks interesting. So I created six samples. Can you believe my first order were 357 belts for women. They were very nice very fashionable, big with metals, with, you know, very creative. Because if you remember in the 80s, and I started in the 90s, uh, they were very hot in fashion, wearing big belts, women's. It is something that maybe is coming back again, but not like, like that time. So I start, I continue then, next step, applying leather to dresses. And people thought that I was a fashion designer. But those dresses were created by a friend of mine because she told me, Nabis, you do great things in leather. Why don't you intervene or decorate my dresses? I say, okay, looks good. Let's do this business together. So I went to stores to show the collections, that collection that was black and white with gold and silver applications in leather. And one of the boutique's owners became crazy. Nabis, I love your dresses. I need, I need a big order, but I need other designs. Can you prepare sketches for me? I told myself, I was, I, I was silent, you know, because, well, we say, well, this is a good proposal, but I'm not prepared, but I didn't say a word. I said, how many days you need? Well, I need that for next week. I say, oh my God, this is short time. So the point is that, I asked for more days and 15 days, 15 days later, two weeks later, I showed that woman a complete collection, of course, in paper, the draws, but I was practicing learning about fabric. It was crazy. It was I, because I didn't know. So I learned in two weeks without sleeping almost a lot about because I bought books. I was reading Harper Bazaar. I was, you know, trying to catch information. Of course, it was not difficult because I love art and I was a student to be a journalist. And she asked for a big order. She made a big order. So with that money and, you know, selling belts, I rented a beautiful house in the best location in my city, like in Madison Avenue in New York. And I opened my first boutique in what, November. And, and let me just interrupt you for a minute. What year was that when you opened your first boutique? It was September 1987. So you were just 22 years old. Yes, but it was something great, but I had a great opening because I always love philanthropy like you, because I always, since I was a boy, I, I always care about people. And uh, I studied to be a priest six years before, and uh, I was, thinking to dedicate my life to other people because it was something that fulfilled my life, you know, my goals. And uh, I became a member of the Rotary Club exactly when I opened my boutique, a few days before. So for my opening, all the members of the Rotary Club that were the most important people from the Society of Maracaibo support me and they came to my party and I was full in that cocktail, and it was a great opening. So, well, it was a good starting. Now, Nobis, 
I'm a little confused. You studied to become a priest. Was that before or after you opened the boutique in Venezuela? Before, before. I was in the, when I was in high school, I was 13. I studied in a Catholic school, very important. And the, the rector of the school noticed that I had skills. And there were a few guys that, you know, we liked that life. Of course, I was too young, but I was very inspired. And I feel something inside me. I feel like the call, you know, to be involved in that life. I really enjoy it. I, I learned a lot. And then when I finished high school, I start in the superior professional seminary. And it was the reason because I studied philosophy, because it's part of to be a, the preparation to be a priest. I had three years studios preliminary in the high school, and then three more years in, the co in college in the major seminary. But after six years there, I was 18. I thought that, you know, it wasn't the right life for me, even though I was like the leader in the community. I was a very successful guy in the seminary. And, but I was honest to myself. I said, no. I love this life and I'm still Catholic, but this is not for me because maybe I always like it to be the leader and there you need you need to follow rules, orders, you know? Yes, now another question. Uh, we have many Venezuelans here in the United States that are leaving Venezuela uh, for a better life here. Um, I have read that in Venezuela, medical supplies are not available and um, even simple things are not available and it's a relatively dangerous life and in a conversation with you earlier you mentioned you had been kidnapped and um, then uh, sent or uh, transported to Colombia and it was something like 29 days and I just want to say I know you don't want to talk about that I'm very sorry that happened to you but my question is, is it that dangerous? And why do so many people from Venezuela, why are they coming here? We're reading that it's just going to be a much better life here. What, what are your thoughts? Well, Venezuela is a beautiful country. Used it to be better before. You know, it was a country of very successful people. It was a very rich country because we have gold, oil, we produce food, what we used to. But in 1999, Hugo Chavez became president of the country. And it was when everything started going bad. And uh, Maduro continues the legacy of Chavez, but that Chavez regime was absolutely a dictatorial government. And dictatorial dictatorial government killed the country. You know, many people died in protests, killed by police and government people, and uh, people from the government, sorry. And uh, well, the country was going bad, bad. It was from 1999 to today, but Hugo Chavez died in 2013. That time when Hugo Chavez was president was, absolutely terrible, it's still bad. The, the economy was devastated, was destructed. You know, I think that 95%, maybe I'm wrong, but I think that majority of our industry was closed. So the life became very, very difficult for everyone there. And especially because the, the country became dangerous because the, that government support very dangerous people. So I was kidnapped. I never thought, even in my country, just few of my friends knew. And because I had a successful business, I had a beautiful boutique in my, my city. I, I, I had great clients that were coming to my store. I created a beautiful headquarter, like a mansion, where I attend private clients. So I noticed that many people were calling me so it was a very sad story because I was for a long few years 
receiving calls. I was persecuted. I was followed when I was driving outside. So I was basically hidden in my place. So there, there are two reasons because I came to the U.S. First, because New York was always my goal. And it's a happy reason, you know. I'm very happy because now I feel like, oh, hello, now this is New Yorker now. Well, you know, I feel very happy in the city doing what I love to do, fashion. I have received the support of many people like you, that we became friends because you believe in me. I truly believe in you. And, but Venezuela is a country where people are having a bad time. And this is the reason because many people are moving because they are not making money. There is no work. So there is a country that everything is expensive. The salary is maybe $150 a month, but people need at least 1000 to live. So what people do? And you know, there is not electricity. In my city recently, there were no water along two weeks. The electricity is gone a few hours a day. So, oh my God, it's very difficult for people that remain there to live. So I understand, and that's, I can understand why you came to the United States and why so many other people from Venezuela are coming here and we read about it all the time, but it's always good to hear firsthand from someone like yourself, Nobis, who actually lived in Venezuela for a long time. Do you have any plans to go back? Well, Venezuela will be always my country. I have friends, I have properties, I have a beautiful house, I have few apartments. And, uh, and I, I left my beautiful business there, but honestly, I'm trying to make it here. So my mother is getting older, it's not easy to travel. I miss my country, I miss my friends very much, but um, I'm committed to make it in New York. So I, I should be focused, you know. I yes. hope to come back in the future. And you have a beautiful fashion line and I think people love and respect you for who you are and what you do. And you're also getting involved in philanthropy. I know I became acquainted with you, Nobbies, when a friend of mine went to an auction event and purchased, I'm, I'm sorry, a charity event and purchased um, a gift certificate for a dress or a gown from your uh, workshop. And I haven't used it yet, but I'm looking forward to going into your workshop or your atelier and having the dress made because your, your work is absolutely beautiful. Now tell me, has it been difficult uh, to adjust to the United States. You mentioned to me in an earlier conversation that you've been in New York City for about three years. And I think before that you were living elsewhere in the United States, but what has the adjustment been like for you and then uh, for your mother? I, I should say that we have been fortunate. We have been very lucky because we were received with open arms in Miami. We arrived in the US at ending 2015 with many parties, people offered dinner for us. So it was like a, the first year we were in a, in a party, it was not really difficult. My friends were happy, you know, I think that in Florida, just Venezuela, there are quarter million people. So I've been in Venezuela everywhere. They are living many of my friends since all my life. So we had a great time in Miami. Uh, it's difficult uh, to be an immigrant. I think that for everyone, when you move, especially because I came to the US when I just had 50. And it's not easy. It's easier when you came like in your twenties and especially doing a career where there are too many people doing the same. You know, so, and also the fashion industry in the U.S. is huge. There are many stores, beautiful, and there are many discounts. So people nowadays buy online also. And for a designer, an independent designer trying to make it in the U.S., it's not easy. Of course it's not. But I have been doing my thing. 
after six months in the country. You know that in May 2016 in Miami, I showed my first collection named Chromatic Four. I did a, an exhibition like a, a museum exhibition. I bought 18 mannequins in New York, very contemporary, and it was hosted by Art Nouveau Gallery in Wynwood. And we were expecting on the opening day, like a hundred people. There were 252 people in that party. I had press coverage with TV. I was interviewed with in magazines. So it was great for me. You know, I thought, well, I'm starting with the right foot. And then I opened an atelier in Brickell Key in downtown Miami. I was very happy in, in Miami. You know, I have so much party indeed. At some point after two years in Miami, it was 2017, I told myself, Navis, you are having so much party, so much fun. You are not speaking English because, you know, Miami, everyone speaks Spanish. And I wanted to speak better English. But also, I was dreaming with New York since I was a teenager. You know, I said, Miami is great, but with all the respect, New York is New York. So one day I told my mother, listen, I have a proposal for you. I know that we are happy in Miami with friends. We have the atelier. We are having sales. We are having a successful life. But... My dream is to go to New York. You want to come? You will be a little bit lonely because maybe we will not have many friends in New York. I just had acquaintances, but not friends. So she said, Navis, let's go to New York. I love the idea. I took my car, everything in, and I drove to Miami, Miami New York, Saturday afternoon, and next day, Sunday, we were in New York. And now it was 2018, like a, more than four years ago. And uh, I can tell that I am very happy. I have no regrets. On the contrary, I think that I could live in New York forever. I go to Miami sometimes. I'm working with a producer company in LA. I go a lot to LA very silently because they don't allow to do any comment about that projects. I'm working as a fashion designer for a few documentaries. It's a hard work, but it's very interesting. And now I have my atelier, I have my showroom, and I have many friends in New York, you know. I'm becoming a New Yorker, I'm happy here. Yes, now for our audience, we are with Nabis Vilman. He is a Venezuelan fashion designer now living in New York City. And since this show is about philanthropy, I think it would be very interesting, Nabis, to hear more about the philanthropic work you did in Venezuela and that you're now doing in the United States. I can tell that I started my philanthropy life when I was very young in my school. Because in my school, as a Catholic school, we were working, trying always to do things for other people. So my first very project was in 1982, when I organized, uh, it was in, in a town, I organized uh, an event for musicians, and uh, it was a lot of people there. I organized everything. I like to organize things, always. And, uh, well, we were raising money for, for a school. Then... Uh, the, let's say that I start professionally doing philanthropy because philanthropy is like a, something very serious. There are people that think that because they give some money, this is philanthropy. Okay, good. But when you decide that part of your life, like you do, Jean, is dedicated to other people as a philanthropist because you like that, because you care about people, because you, you want to make a better world around you, it's a commitment. It means that you will work, you will invest time on that. So it was when I was renting my first location for my first boutique. It was 1987 and I was having success with my sales. And the owner of the house that I rented told me, Nabis, I will rent you this house. You are so young, but you look serious because you know, you will have a big responsibility to pay me the rent. 
but I will ask you for something that I need you to be a member of the Rotary Club. I was 21 and I told the guy, well, but it's not Rotary for all people. Yes, Navid is for people that are 26 years in a head. But even you are 21, you look so serious and I want you to be a member. So I became, and at the same time, when I was officially a member of the Rotary Club, Company. In my country, Rotary Club is the most important nonprofit organization. Rotary was created in the U.S. in 1905, 117 years ago. And in my country, they created universities, hospitals. They did a lot. And when I became a Rotary Club member, I was involved in many activities. I learned a lot. Indeed, I was director of the community services years later and uh, well i was there doing that and then now in the u.s i have been collaborating with the latino commission on aids and trying to support any organization that asks for my help that's wonderful and i only can say i want to thank you because when someone comes into the united states as an immigrant as you have um, you start a new life, and it's so nice to see that you are working also to give back. It's part of your history, your history in Venezuela, and now it's your history in the United States. Nabis, we have just about one minute left. What advice would you give to anyone coming into the United States as an immigrant? First, please come with all the papers in order. It's very important to do a real good legal process, avoiding mistakes. There are many people that don't like that, but it's the best way because it's important to do right and to be a good immigrant. Then learn, second, learn the language. It's very important to speak English because as a US resident, it's your responsibility. And third, work hard, very hard. You need to have goals, anything you like, because I think that the secret of your life, do exactly what you want to do in your life. Listen to your heart. Listen what is inside you. Thank you, Jean. I really appreciate this opportunity to be here telling my story. And uh, I'm really happy for this opportunity to be a New Yorker resident, and soon, I hope, an American citizen. Nabis, you've been an excellent guest. Thank you very much for telling us your story and also uh, to inspire all of us who may be here um, just as citizens and also you're inspiring people who want to become citizens. Thank you very much. This concludes Successful Philanthropy. Our guest today, Nabis Vilman. He is a Venezuelan fashion designer living in New York City. I'm Jean Shafferoff, your host. I'll see you next week. Thank you.